and I call this presentation Nine Things You Need to Know About uh, College Planning, and I'm going to try to go through. If you have questions as we go, just raise your hands, um, you know, and I'll try to answer them as we go. The first thing, you know, that I want to make, the first point I want to make is that college is a, a lesson in decision making, right? And, and as parents, I know the one thing you're, I guess you try to teach your kids to make good decisions and hope that when the time comes that they'll make those good decisions. At least that's the way I'm hoping to work with my son. Um, this, for many students, really, this is the first major life decision that they'll have to make. And it's the first of many big decisions that they will have to make, right? After a college, what job do you accept? And other large investments as you go on, purchasing a house, purchasing a car, all of these things really involve the same process. You gather information from a variety of sources, put all that information together, and then you make the best decision you can. Uh, one of the keys is owning, you know, owning the decision and the responsibility for making the decision. Another thing is looking at the sources, right? You get information from a variety of sources, and every source has their own angle or their own spin. So being able to discern what is the spin that they're putting on this, is it valid for me, right? And ultimately, it's the student who's going to be living there. Um, I look at college in a few ways. One, I was an economics major, and so I look at it as an investment, right? It's an investment in what they call human capital. Um, the amount of money you're going to earn over a lifetime. The average college graduate earns more than twice that of the average high school graduate over a lifetime. So you're investing in, in your earnings potential and, and also in developing yourself as a person. Um, so as well as an investment decision, and also it's a significant in financial investment on the parents' part. You're looking at the average state school, if you're going to live there, is about 15000 Yukon's a little more, the other four or less. So you're looking at 60000 to a lot of the private schools now around 50000 a year or over $50,000 a year. So you're looking at investing between sixty dollars to $200,000 um, over the next four years. And, and again, as I, I usually start by saying this is the first of many bad pieces of information I'll have to give you, so I should be handing out tissues instead <laughs> of, uh, or at least print these on softer paper so you can use it to uh, wipe your eyes as you go through. Um, but, you know, again, if done correctly, there is a lot of stress in the process, but in if done correctly, it is, a, it is a very valuable lesson, right? In learning about yourself, it's a, it's a growth process, right? All through high school, you're growing, and then in college, you're going to just, as you apply to college, you learn more about yourself, what you're looking for, where you would be happiest, where you would learn best, and then you continue to grow as you go to college and move on into your career. Um, one thing that I would like to say is I think there's so much focus has been put on the, the college process that are the college experience that a lot of, in a lot of places we're losing the high school experience. I think people are too focused on looking good for college that they're failing to enjoy high school, right, and get the most out of that experience, which is also part of the growth process. So again, we talk about this. This is a very important investment. It, it, it's a very important decision. What are the sources we're going to use to gather information for this decision? Um, obviously, the Internet. Right, the internet is a, a great source of information, but you have a lot of different sites out there. I'm sure if, if you have your Gmail accounts and Google collects all their information about you, so every time you log on, they're putting up ads for all different college websites. What's their spin? Right? How, are, how are they making money from that site is one thing to consider as you look at their information. Are they trying to, to sell you something? Um, and then when you look at the schools, remember, schools really are a business. Um, not all of the colleges have these large endowments like the Yales, the Harvards, uh, Princetons, uh, where you know, they can move money from one fund into an operating fund. Most schools are tuition-driven businesses, right? And in order to stay in business, they need to put butts in the seats, right? And so if you look at the marketing or at the admissions tab of any web page, it's really marketing, right? If you, how many, well, actually, I us rewind to the beginning. What, what ages do we have here? How many people are parents of seniors? Juniors, younger than juniors, sophomores or freshmen. Great, that's great. So, oh, multiples. <laughs> okay. My brother, sister, and I were all a year apart. So we're Irish triplets, right? And so there were three of us in in college at once, which for financial aid is good because they divide the amount of money they expect you can pay by how many children you have. I mean, not exactly by three, but roughly. Okay. Um, so for those of you who are juniors now, those who are seniors can tell them that after they take the PSAT, starting in about January of junior year through the next year, how many catalogs would you say you get every day oh in the mail? Oh my God. 
<laughs> One. How many oh. trees have died throughout? <laughs> shopping bags full of catalogs. Shopping bags. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember like ten from. I mean, you get them once a month from the same school. You know, you go. And they all look the same, yeah. right? Everyone is this big, smiling, happy family. They're all yeah. hugging. They yeah. use the same buzzwords, <laughs> right? One from one school. I've gotten a half a dozen from the same school. You know, they just keep sending them to me. If oh, you gosh. cross out the names, they all. The information they put looks pretty much the same for the most part. You know, they talk about small class size, individual attention, diversity, right, and technology, and, and now always the focus on careers, you know, career placement, getting a job afterwards, which again, if it's an investment, where's your payoff when you get your job afterwards? So making sure that they're helping you in whatever your next step is, too, is, is important. But those are marketing pieces. Those are throwaway pieces, right? They don't show you if it's Syracuse, they're not going to show you the snowy, rainy, muddy day that you're going to live in for the majority of the time there. It's always a beautiful fall day or a sunny spring day where everyone, you know, again, everyone's hugging. The other one that was popular a few years ago was the jump shot <laughs> with a group of people all jumping at once, right? But you see the same things. They're marketing pieces. So you have to learn to look through that. I mean, it is a good source of information because most colleges, when you go around, there's always construction on the campus, right? They're always adding on new things. So the school's brochures are a good source of information as to the current facilities, current programs, and unfortunately, current tuition. That's the most accurate. A lot of the other places may be outdated on the tuition, which leads you to believe the school is a better deal than it, it really might be. Um, when you go to the website, there are what I call list building sites, places where you would start to kind of build your funnel of schools, right? Where you can look at information on a a large number of schools. Uh, a great starting place is the College Board. Right? The College Board website has a college finder on there. Uh, another good one, Princeton Review. Right? The Review, and they have the counselor Omatic, uh, which will tell you, you know, if schools are a good match and if they think it's a reach, possible safety. Um, FastWeb is a, a source of information on the private scholarships. One thing about that is a lot of the private scholarships, private scholarships are really a small piece of overall college funding, right? And a lot of these national scholarships will get thousands and thousands of applications for one scholarship. Um, and so while it, it's great, the, the more targeted a scholarship is, probably the better chance you have. So if it's a niche scholarship, it's worth it to apply. But otherwise, you really should focus on local scholarships. I'm the, the chair of the Devon Rotary Scholarship Committee, and we give out $22,000 a year in scholarships to Milford residents or students attending Milford schools. And so, you know, there are 13 to 14 scholarships. You know, students from law are eligible for almost every one we have, except a few that are designated for flat students. Um, Milford Chamber of Commerce, they give out uh, 26 scholarships, I believe. Okay, and these are scholarships with one application you can be considered for a number. And it's about a one in four chance versus a one in you know, 5,000, you know, I was uh, involved with one scholarship, we had 70,000 applications in one month for one scholarship, so a 1 in 70,000 chance, you might as well buy a lottery ticket, at least then it would pay for all four years instead of $1,000 towards, you know, towards the education. Um, some of the books, you know, there are a lot of good books on the process, and one that sounds similar to what you had mentioned, Accepted, is uh, The Gatekeepers where uh, Jock Steinberg, who has a, a blog on uh, the New York Times, which is pretty good on the admissions process, called The Choice. But uh, his book, The Gatekeepers, followed five students through the admissions process and the admissions officers at Wesleyan. So it's unique in that you get both perspectives if you want to understand how the process works. Um, you know, those types of books, another good one is A is for Admission by Michelle Hernandez. But if you're looking at the guidebooks, how many of the people whose uh, children are seniors have purchased those the, the guidebooks, like the Peterson's Guide, the, the College Board, these large books, which this big by this big, <laughs> large, right, larger than the Bible. Almost all the information now is on their website, so it's, it's not as necessary to purchase those books. Um, a lot of times the people who purchase the books, you go to the back pages and they have these two-page write-ups on the schools, and you assume that it's unbiased information. It's actually been submitted by the marketing departments at the schools, and they pay to have that included in there. And so it's, you know, it's not unbiased information, right? It's more marketing. Um, a great list-building book is uh, a book called Ruggs, Ruggs' Recommendations on the Colleges. He, what he does is he recommends colleges based on the strength of the major. And the only problem with that is the average student is going to change his or her major twice when they get to college. And so you want to make sure there are enough options. If, 
if you're choosing a, a school based on the major, that enough of their other choices are there as well. Um, you know, of the big books, those the starting books, you have Rug, I'm not Rug, I'm sorry, you have Peterson's Guide, College Board. Um, then you have the Insider's Guides, which are books that are about maybe 300 to 400 schools, uh, or 460, whatever it is, schools. Um, and those are a little more um, objective, right? They'll either have a team of editors or they send out surveys to the colleges. Um, those are books like the Fisk's Guide to the Colleges, Yale Daily News Insider's Guide, and then Princeton Review has one, and it, it usually changes. There's a new best college every year. I think it's like the best 461 colleges now, but the number creeps up a little bit every year. Um, and that's a great way, you know, you start with your list, and then you just have to narrow it down. Right, and so you go to the school's websites, it, and that's really, you know, the admissions, but then also looking at what's of interest to the student. If they want to run track, looking at the track team, what are the times? Can I run for this school? Right, would I be able to make the team? They're interested in, in the newspaper. You know, looking at the, reading the newspaper online. Or if they're interested in theater and drama, but they don't want to be a major, look and see are the productions. Are they only open to majors? Are they open to all you know, to all students. If they enjoyed it in high school, they're going to enjoy it in college, right? And college is very different in that most students, when you start high school, they have a support network. They're still at home, or, you know, they have some, even if they go to a high school that maybe not all of their friends are going to, when they come home, all of their friends are still around them. When you go to college, especially if you go away to college, it's the first time a student may be completely starting over, right? And so they may not know anyone else there, or they may be one or two other people from their high school, but there's no guarantee they were friends with them, right? And so it's really starting over. So what a great way when you get there is to do things you enjoyed in high school. That, that's a way to meet people that have the same interests as you and help you with your support network, right? And when I started, you know, running college, then all of a sudden you had the upperclassmen to help you with your schedule, to help you, um, you know, give you advice on what to expect.